just had something go right over the top of us that, I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top of us. There was one pop the golf, good. And it was anybody at sun, uh, above us that passed us like 30 seconds ago. There was one pop the golf, negative. Okay. Pump this. A UFO. Yeah. It's murder 295. Yeah, something just passed over. It's so, uh, like a, don't know what it was, but it's at least two, 3,000 feet above us. So yeah, it passed right over the top of us. The government has come out and established for the record these are real. That's, we are over the Rubicon on that. We are, there's, that has occurred. In the last three years, the government has said UAPs are real. We have established a task force. We are providing a report to Congress. They're receiving classified briefings. This is whatever it is, it is real. So what you're telling me is that UFOs, unidentified flying objects, are real. Bill, I think we're beyond that already. The government has already stated for the record that they're real. I'm not telling you that. The United States government is telling you that. The government report on UFOs was released. And the bottom line, there, ex there exists no worldly explanation as to a number of episodes. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. There are things flying around up there that we haven't fully identified yet. The long-awaited Pentagon report on UFOs has finally been released. In it, the intelligence community reveals what it knows about a series of mysterious sightings by Navy pilots and others. CBS 2's David Martin has more. This strange encounter with an unidentified flying object is one of more than 140 U.S. intelligence cannot explain. This one was witnessed by the crews of two Navy jet fighters off the coast of California. There was four of us in the airplanes literally watching this thing for roughly about five minutes. And as they told 60 Minutes, recording it on a targeting camera until it zipped away. Your mind tries to make sense of it. I'm going to categorize this as maybe a helicopter or maybe a drone. And when it disappeared, I mean, it was just... A report by this country's top intelligence officials acknowledges there have been 18 encounters in which so-called unexplained aerial phenomena demonstrate advanced technology U.S. experts cannot explain, which is what David Fravor has been saying ever since his encounter in 2004. I don't know who's building it, who's got the technology, who's got the brains, but there's, there's something out there that was better than our airplane. The variety of witnesses of UFOs is endless. They include military personnel from the Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, radar specialists, aeronautical engineers, airport traffic controllers, pilots, astronomers, FBI agents, state, county, and city police. Countries from all over the world are now sharing information about unidentified flying objects that are frequently seen in restricted airspace performing maneuvers that no earthly aircraft could achieve. Often these objects seem to bend the laws of physics and display extraordinary flight characteristics such as instantaneous acceleration, hypersonic velocity, low observability, and transmedium travel, which means they move seamlessly between air and water. They are able to perform in any environment. They have been seen going from high speeds in the air to submerging underwater without causing a splash. They have no visible propulsion systems and do not use aerodynamic body styles or wings for lift. The idea that within our lifetime, perhaps in this decade, that our civilization would come face to face with alien life, the media says this is no longer science fiction and they are actively encouraging the idea of alien visitors. UFOs are not exclusive to modern society. Many might be surprised to find out these sightings have occurred throughout our history. Egyptians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans all recorded seeing objects in the skies at some point. Roman historians who were very meticulous about documenting situations have archived many phenomena that they could not explain. The parallels to modern UFO sightings are comparable. For example, in 217 BC, numerous witnesses in Rome watched a group of what was described as shiny round shields of polished bronze maneuvering in different directions across the skies. Fantastic question. Let me share with you an experience that I had at the um, 
in Rome not too long ago. Uh, I had the honor and pleasure of sitting down with some individuals that were out of the Vatican. And there was a scroll, uh, and in this scroll it was written in Latin, and it was a communique between a Roman soldier and a Roman general some 2,000 years ago. And what they described in this communique was um, the, the name for the Roman shield is Eclipus, means um, like eclipse, like a sun. And so they described these flaming Roman shields in the sky that would follow them from battle space to battle space. Another incident was witnessed by thousands of Roman soldiers getting ready to fight the king of what is now modern day Turkey. The sighting occurred in 74 BC. As both armies were marching towards each other, a glowing ball of light came from the sky. The historian wrote that a huge flame-like body was seen to fall between the two armies. He stated it to be in the shape of a wine jar and the color of molten silver. The object of light did not crash, but landed in between the two armies, stopping their advancements. Each army, both fascinated and scared of the mysterious craft, began to retreat, breaking up the battle for that day. Perhaps one of the best recorded ancient sightings was by the Jewish historian Josephus in May of 66 AD. According to his account, mysterious and unnerving spectacles occurred over the skies of Judea. Josephus claimed chariots and troops of soldiers in their armor were seen running about among the clouds. He would state the encounter to be a miraculous phenomenon, passing belief. He knew that what he recorded would be very hard for people to believe, so Josephus writes that it would likely have been deemed a fable were it not for the narratives of other eyewitnesses. The lights battling in the skies were seen by thousands of people all over the countryside and in neighboring cities. The same event was also recorded by the Roman historian Tacitus, who said, in the sky appeared a vision of armies in conflict, of glittering armor. What makes this account so fascinating is that it happened a few years before the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, leading to the death of one million Jews and the destruction of their temple, which Jesus predicted 40 years earlier in Matthew 24. Josephus later wrote that he believed the lights in the skies to be a warning from God of the coming destruction. One of the strangest UFO cases occurred in Nuremberg, Germany on April 14, 1561. In the early morning hours, hundreds of people witnessed above the city what they described as an aerial battle between objects of light and glowing orbs. The phenomenon in the sky captured the attention of a printer and publisher, Hans Glosser, who wrote an article and painted a picture of what he saw in the skies that day. This article is preserved in pristine condition in a central library in Switzerland. Here are a few quotes from the article that he wrote. Dreadful apparitions occurred on the sun, and then this was seen in Nuremberg and in the city, before the gates and in the country, by many men and women. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircular arcs, just like the moon in the last quarter, and in the sun above and below and on both sides the color was blood. There stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black furrous color. These all started to fight among themselves, so that the globes which were first in the sun flew out to the one standing on both sides. Thereafter, the globes standing outside the sun in the small and large rods flew into the sun. After all this, there was something like a black spear, very long and thick-sided. The shaft pointed to the east, the point pointed west. Whatever such signs mean, God alone knows. This was not something that happened very quickly then disappeared. This phenomenon was witnessed by hundreds of people for over an hour. Hans ends the article with, Although we have seen many signs in the heavens, which are sent to us by the Almighty God, to bring us to repentance, we still are, unfortunately, so ungrateful that we despise such signs and miracles of God. Hans believed these lights in the skies were warnings from God for the city to repent. It is very interesting that this happened during the peak of the Protestant Reformation and was followed by what's known as the 30 years of war between Catholics and Protestants. It was one of the longest and most destructive conflicts in European history, resulting in millions of casualties. Nuremberg was not the only place lights were seen in the skies. 
Another phenomenon occurred five years later in 1566 on three separate days, witnessed by hundreds of people and recorded as historical events. This was in Basel, Switzerland on July 27th, 28th, and August 7th of 1566. This was very similar to the previous Nuremberg account where they saw glowing orbs of light that seemed to be fighting amongst themselves. Again, an article and picture were drawn to describe the events which we still have today. Those were just a few of the historical sightings of UFOs that have been recorded. Someone's understanding of this phenomenon is usually based on that person's worldview. It is only in the 20th century that people started to believe these lights in the skies to be aliens from other planets. Since the dawn of sci-fi novels, radio, and TV, this idea of aliens visiting us from other worlds has been implanted into our culture. Usually when people encounter a UFO, it's uncommon that they see the sci-fi looking flying saucers. UFO investigator Joe Jordan of MUFON has spent years cataloging these occurrences says it's very rare that people see metallic discs, but the most reported cases are glowing orbs or balls of light. Query that I'm seeing. Now when it gets to the shape of the object, number one shape is actually not a saucer shape. Mm -hmm. It's actually just a fuzzy edge glowing object. Mm -hmm. okay? like, an, like an orb. Like, like that term, you know, if mm -hmm. you want to use that. But that's the number one thing that's reported, the mm, scripture. It's way, 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 way down the list that you got some guy that says, I actually saw the typical flying saucer. Mm -hmm. okay. One of the most well-known stories of glowing orbs is the biblical account of angels. Although the Bible says angels can cloak their appearances and shapeshift into any object, the most surprising default physical aesthetic is their ability to produce a very strong luminescence from all parts of their body. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The Bible describes angels as spiritual beings that can appear to humans in any form they choose. Hebrews 13.2 says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. The intrinsic nature of these spiritual beings is complex. According to the Bible, it is possible for them to manipulate the weather and travel beyond the speed of light. They also have the capabilities to cause humans to see very vivid visions and dreams. They can appear in physical forms or spiritual. The Bible describes a war between good and bad angels. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Could it be that these unidentified aerial phenomenons that people are witnessing is not physical, but spiritual in nature. Well, first of all, the aircraft had zero control surfaces. It had no means of propulsion that we could detect. It moved at hypersonic velocities, uh, and it preceded the pilots to their cap point. So it seemed to have some uh, knowledge of where the, ca the pilots were headed ahead of time, and we don't possess those abilities to do that. We have a look on the ASA. My gosh. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I'll take it. This was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball bouncing off a wall. The ability to hover over the water and then start a vertical climb from basically zero up towards about 12,000 feet and then accelerate in less than two seconds and disappear is something I had never seen in my life. Interesting perspective. Let's talk about some of the facts out there of evidence that may support your conclusion that the UFOs are spiritual phenomena, not physical like so many other people also believe. What what can we pinpoint again? Well, again, it's something where you cannot have a material or a physical being penetrating the ground, penetrating the water, appearing in front of people, then disappearing instantly, and then also changing colors, sometimes only when they're accelerating with every color in the spectrum has been reported. Uh, many UFOs, 
coming and making one UFO, one UFO breaking apart and then going into multiple UFOs. It's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And then not, not only just that, but to get into the fact of how far they're traveling uh, and the speed that they would have to travel and just the other problems with cosmic dust and traveling at the speed of light and then running into the, those bits of cosmic dust, the explosions that would be created, the amount of energy that would be consumed uh, and traveling from these distances, um, just all those kinds of things really scream out that you're dealing with a spiritual phenomenon, not a material or physical phenomenon. There does seem to be a, a deception here, because I've always wondered, you know, my gosh, if they're that benevolent, if they're that understanding of humankind, make yourself available. In yeah, your, and, and, and that's, that's why, um, you know, some of, these, some of these other scientists have said that they, they seem to be trying to set people up to, to deceive them as if they are aliens, but the facts just say that they, they can't be that, that there's something else. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, and there's something else, a psychological deception that's going on here. And many of these scientists say, I don't know what it is, but we've concluded that it's got to be that. It's got to be something bigger is going on here than just them trying to show people that, yes, you know, here's a UFO that you're seeing now, we are aliens, that, there, that there's got to be something else going on here on top of the fact that the characteristics of them show that they just cannot be some material or physical craft. Do you think, <clears throat> do you think humans are involved in the deception? I'm losing my voice here. I've got to pop it back. Um... As far as inside, I think there, there have been deliberate hoaxes that have been perpetrated. And, uh, you know, an interesting statement, I mean, there are many that could be quoted, um, but uh, Gordon Creighton, who I, I know you know of him, yeah. uh, probably, who died in uh, 2003, he made this statement in the British journal Flying Saucer Review. He said, quote, there seems to be no evidence yet that any of these craft or beings originate from outer space. Many of the world's leading UFO researchers have all come to similar conclusions after looking at all the data collected over the years. Dr. Jacques Vallée is a computer scientist and astrophysicist. Vallée has also addressed the UN on the subject of UFOs and is widely recognized as the premier expert on the subject. He has done computer analysis on tens of thousands of UFO reports. Vallée has also authored eight books on the topic of UFOs. Dr. Vallée says in his book, Messengers of Deception, consider what these UFO sightings have in common. In each case, the so-called spacecraft did not disappear by moving away, even at high speed. It simply vanished on the spot or it slowly faded away. In other cases, UFOs have been reported to enter the ground. I hardly need to point out that this behavior is contrary to what physical objects do and quite impossible to duplicate with our current spacecraft technology. It is the behavior of an image or a holographic projection, yet at other times the objects have left material traces. Dr. Jacques Vallée does not have a biblical worldview, but he comes to similar conclusions that these objects seem to be from another dimension. Many UFO researchers have now abandoned the extraterrestrial hypothesis, meaning they do not believe these objects come from outer space or other planets as the media would have you to conclude. Most of the researchers now regard this phenomenon as an interdimensional anomaly. Saying these UFOs originate from another dimension sounds extremely close to what the Bible depicts as a spiritual realm. You've been looking at this phenomenon for a long time. You've worked closely with uh, Dr. Alan Hynek and other UFO researchers. You've written many authoritative books, and yet your perspective on the UFO issue seems rather unique in the sense that you don't seem to be jumping on the yeah, extraterrestrial visitors bandwagon. In this part of Dr. Jacques Vallée's book, Messengers of Deception, he actually uses the word spiritual to describe the phenomenon. He says the UFOs cannot be spacecraft in the ordinary nuts and bolts sense. The UFOs are physical manifestations that cannot be understood apart from their psychic and symbolic reality. What we see here is not an alien invasion. It is a spiritual system that acts on humans and uses humans. 
In your books, particularly your most recent book, Messengers of Deception, which is many years old, you suggest that UFOs are deliberately trying to manipulate uh, our subconscious mind, to create a mythology in our culture about themselves, which is one of the reasons that they're both physical and concrete, yet very elusive at, at the same time. Uh, do you still feel that way? I think that uh, from my own point of view, I'm going to be very disappointed if UFOs turn out to be nothing more than visitors from another planet, because I think they could be something much more interesting. Astronomer Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who died in 1986, was another researcher considered one of the top experts on the subject of UFOs. Hynek was a former skeptic who dismissed the UFO sightings as something made up by people seeking attention. As he continued to study the issue, his view began to change and he realized that something really strange was transpiring around the world. Dr. Hynek eventually started a center for UFO studies with Dr. Vallee. Dr. Hynek served for over 20 years as the Air Force's scientific expert on UFOs. He studied thousands of reports and interrogated hundreds of witnesses to UFO experiences. Hynek's conclusions on UFOs were accurately summed up this way when he said to Newsweek magazine, one of the most intriguing aspects of the UFO sightings is their apparent isolation in space and time. Sightings are usually made in one place at a time and last for short periods, sometimes appearing out of nowhere. This is much more suggestive of a parallel reality than let's say visits from some faraway planet, in which case you might expect them to stick around for a while. Dr. Hynek was stating that he did not believe these were visitors from other planets like the media suggests. Dr. Hynek said in a 1975 interview, many UFO reports seem to pertain more to accounts of poltergeist and types of psychic manifestations than to actual solid items of nuts and bolts hardware. That is one of the reasons why I cannot accept the obvious explanation of UFOs as visitors from outer space. Another one of the top experts in the world on UFOs is John Kill, who passed away in 2009. Kill began to investigate UFOs on a full-time basis in early 1966. Kill has interviewed thousands of people who claim to see UFOs and has traveled the world to hotspot sighting locations where he witnessed the phenomenon himself. He reviewed more than 2,000 books in addition to thousands of newspaper magazines and newsletters. Initially like Dr. Vallee, Kill was hopeful that he could validate the ET visitation hypothesis that these unidentified objects were aliens from a distant planet. Kill said he had to abandon that hypothesis after about a year of investigating UFOs. Kill has authored many books on the topic and said in his book, Operation Trojan Horse, the statistical data that I have extricated indicate that flying saucers are not stable machines requiring fuel, maintenance, or logistical support. They are, in all probability, transmogrifications of energy and do not exist in the same way that this book exists. They are not permanent constructions of matter. On page 128 of his book, Trojan Horse, Kill says, There are countless sightings of objects that change size and shape in front of the viewers or split into several smaller objects, each going off in a different direction. In some cases, this process was reversed with several small lights converging together to form a single large one, which then went dashing off. Over and over again, witnesses have told me in hushed tones, you know, I don't think that thing I saw was mechanical at all. I got the distinct impression that it was alive. Kill also says, the UFOs do not seem to exist as tangible manufactured objects. They do not conform to the accepted natural laws of our environment. The thousands of contacts with these entities indicate that they are liars and put on artists. The UFO manifestations seem to be by and large merely minor variations of the age-old demonological phenomenon. John Keel does not have a biblical worldview, but he concludes that the UFO phenomenon is identical to his studies of demonology. Demonology is the study of demons. Demons in the Bible are the fallen angels that were kicked out of heaven. John Kill says, Demonology is not just another crackpotology. The manifestations and occurrences described in the imposing literature are similar, if not entirely identical, to the UFO phenomenon itself. 
Victims of demon possession suffer the very same medical and emotional symptoms as the UFO contactees. Alien encounters are measured on a scale developed in 1972 by Dr. J. Allen Hynek named Close Encounters. Close Encounters of the first kind is a sighting in which one or more unidentified flying objects have been spotted. These are the most commonly reported. A close encounter of the second kind is a sighting of a UFO that leaves evidence behind that something did appear, like a frightened animal, land damage, or electronic interference. A close encounter of the third kind are those which have elements of the second kind but include an observation of ETs. Some people have reported seeing an alien inside a craft or outside a landed UFO. These are by far the rarest of the three kinds of encounters. Then, a close encounter of the fourth kind was not included on Hynek's scale at first, but is now accepted. A close encounter of the fourth kind is perhaps the most controversial. This is generally termed as an alien abduction. Reports of alien abductions have skyrocketed since the 1980s. It's estimated that up to 5 million Americans have had the experience of being abducted by entities known as the Greys. Many reported encountering a bright light and then these greys would levitate them out of their homes, transporting them through solid objects like walls or ceilings, then aboard what they described as spaceships. There's two types that I see. One type is about three feet tall, very dark, um, very ugly, not humanoid at all. The others are very, very tall, very uh, lizard looking, not pleasant. The creatures that I have seen mostly have been the uh, the greys. And when I say tall, I'm not talking six feet. I'm talking very tall, like ten feet tall. Usually about three to four foot tall. Real big almond-shaped black eyes. The face was uh, oval. The being itself couldn't have been more than three feet tall. It was uh, sitting cross-legged at the top left-hand corner of my bed. In abduction cases, it is rarely a pleasant experience. Abductees have reported being scoffed at and threatened by their alien captors. Some said they were subjected to different types of medical experiments and examinations against their will. In some cases, the aliens even raped them. Dr. Jacques Vallée says, the medical examinations to which abductees are said to be subjected, often accompanied by sadistic sexual manipulation, is reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with demons. It makes no sense in a sophisticated or technical or biological framework. Any intelligent being equipped with the scientific marvels that UFOs possess would be in a position to achieve any of these alleged scientific objectives in a shorter time and with fewer risks. Gwen Dean, a California-based therapist, studied abduction stories and noted there are 44 parallels to her research on satanic ritual abuse cases. She said, although there is no satisfactory definition of ritual abuse, there are striking similarities between the accounts of ritual abuse and alien abductions. Dr. John Miller reported that when abductees asked the aliens why invasive and often humiliating medical procedures were being performed, the aliens would often respond with a statement like, we have the right to do this. This brings us to an important aspect of the cases. Why were these people chosen to be abducted? Surveys by doctors and researchers have confirmed that the vast majority of abductees have shown an interest in the New Age movement and Eastern religions. Many abductees have also claimed to have a past involvement with astrology, astral projection, witchcraft, Ouija boards, and channeling. This supports the argument that the UFO phenomenon is a result of demonic activity. Because this whole experience, what we have found has been a matter of opening a door. Mm -hmm. Okay, You open the door, whether purposely or unknowingly, to this experience. Okay, They didn't randomly pick you. Mm -hmm. You gave them, how do, I, how do I say it, permission right. by opening that door, by either dabbling in the paranormal or the occult. Mm -hmm. And you may not even know that you did it. Mm -hmm. But you did. Due to God's rules of engagement, these demons cannot insert themselves into your life unless you open a door for them. Similar to the Garden of Eden story, Satan cannot just follow Adam and Eve around with continual temptations. 
He would only have access to them if they came near the forbidden tree of knowledge. The same rules apply today, but Satan has created many gateways to reach us. Dabbling in the occult in any form or fashion can leave you vulnerable. A door could be opened simply by watching an occult movie or listening to music created by people in the esoteric world, as we saw in my previous episodes. In John Kill's book, Operation Trojan Horse, he says that practicing voodoo or black magic has produced sightings of UFOs. He also says sightings of UFOs are usually followed by activities of poltergeists. The people would have a haunted house type experience. He said in some cases the poltergeist way preceded it by a few months. In other cases the UFO and poltergeist activities occurred simultaneously. UFO expert John Keel says dabbling with UFOs can be as dangerous as dabbling with black magic. The phenomenon preys upon the neurotic, the gullible and immature. Paranoid schizophrenia, possession, and even suicide can result and has resulted in a number of cases. Millions of people have been affected at least temporarily by UFO contact. Thousands have gone insane and ended up in mental institutions after their experiences. Researcher Michael Diamond said in his book about UFOs, Most people who have claimed to have been abducted by aliens are almost always totally changed after the abduction. Their view of the world has changed and many develop a deep interest in the occult and paranormal activities. UFO researcher Trevor James said, A working knowledge of occult science is indispensable to UFO investigations. In fact, the connections between the occult and the UFO phenomenon have a long history. The modern connection between UFOs and the occult began in 1917 and 18, when the most notorious occultist of the 20th century, Aleister Crowley, performed a series of satanic rituals in his New York apartment. This ceremony supposedly opened a portal for extra-dimensional entities to visit our world. Crowley drew a picture of the being that came through this portal, and it bears a striking resemblance to the typical depictions of what people describe as gray aliens. This entity is known in occult circles as Lamb. Crowley said when speaking about the entities that he was contacting, Today they call them angels or demons. Tomorrow they'll call them something else. Crowley gave the portrait to another occultist named Kenneth Grant in 1945. The name Lamb is the Tibetan word for way or path. This would be a counterfeit or mocking of Christ who is the real, the way, the truth, and the life. Kenneth Grant was also very clear that the alien greys are the same as Lamb when he wrote, Lamb is the great old one whose archetype is recognizable in accounts of UFO occupants. It's very interesting that the UFO phenomenon increased in the United States shortly after Kenneth Grant received the portrait in 1945 and was encouraging people to contact Lamb entities. Kenneth Grant is generally acknowledged as a successor to Crowley and started the cult of Lamb. In Grant's writings, he says many occultists have been able to contact Lamb through meditation or by chanting his name and staring at his portrait. This brings us to another aspect of the alien phenomenon. In 1946, a young man named Roger Murnau had just left Canada's Merchant Navy. After being discharged, Roger became involved with a secret society that was communicating with demonic spirits. The secret society pursued Roger and tried to get him to join their cult. As bizarre as the story sounds, a documentary filmmaker recently investigated Roger's story and was able to verify most of his account. You can find the film on YouTube named Charmed by Darkness. Roger also provided witnesses to some of the demonic attacks he experienced after leaving the secret society. Roger wrote a book about the events published in 1982 called A Trip into the Supernatural. When attending the ceremonies of the cult, the high priest revealed to Roger that demons in the future would appear to people and claim to be aliens from far distant planets. He called this Satan's grand plan to bring in the new age. Roger said they would come during a period of great tribulation and claim to be able to help humans. Here's a clip from the interview. And the priest uh, told us, uh, he had, we talked to him quite a while, and uh, then he said, uh, could I have a little bit more of your time? I want to do something very fascinating. He says the grain plain, the master's grain plain, for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause, 
just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So we continued, you know, after we uh, expressed ourselves that we're deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said, it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan says is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. Because he says, spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. In Roger Murnau's book, A Trip into the Supernatural, he details how these secret societies operate and that fallen angels or demons appear to the members and give them instructions. Roger describes a very well-organized system and plan to get people to believe that Satan and demons do not exist and that the Bible is just a fictional book. And he was just very candid about this. Oh, yeah. Telling you and yeah. the rest of the group, 60 or 70 people there, yeah. the plans that yeah, close to 100 people. Lucifer he, had revealed to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time the council came to a close, they had three major policies that were going to be followed. First, they were to see to it that humans would be made to believe that Satan and his angels do not really exist. The percent of Americans who identify with any religion has been on the decline for decades. And a recent Pew Research Center study has found the biggest generational drop-off is with millennials. First time ever, a majority of Americans say they do not belong to any sort of organized religion. Christianity is on the decline in the U.S. A new poll reveals a 12% drop in the number of those who identify with the religion. More and more young adults are dropping out of church. According to a recent study, 66% have stopped attending. It's not uncommon for people to seek God during times of hardship. And in some ways, the pandemic has been no different. But even before COVID, a growing number of Americans were moving away from organized religions. And the pandemic didn't do anything to stop that trend. To the secular world, the origin of sin and the reason for its existence are a source of great perplexity. They see the work of evil with its terrible results of desolation. And they question how all this can exist under the sovereignty of a God who is infinite in wisdom, power, and love. Here is a mystery in which they find no explanation. And in their uncertainty and doubt, they are blinded to truths plainly revealed in God's word and essential to salvation. The Bible describes a cosmic battle between Christ and Satan that theologians call the Great Controversy. This war started in heaven, but the earth is now the final staging ground for the last conflict. In all the research we had done, we had never heard of a case of anybody stopping an experience. All the researchers, the top researchers, were saying that this could not be done. You couldn't stop an abduction experience. They had no record of it. So here I am with a case where a guy says he called out in the name of Jesus and stopped an experience. So I went after those cases because I now knew they were there. Over the next 10 years, I have now worked with over 400 cases of people that have been able to stop the abduction experience in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. This is documented evidence. The Bible warns these fallen angels will deceive the whole world. What kind of deception could deceive everyone on earth? We are talking about people from different nationalities, different cultures, and different worldviews, all falling for one massive deception. I believe people will see very strange and disturbing spectacles in our skies in the very near future. An overmastering delusion, passing beyond belief, is soon to take place. The book of Revelation describes a time when the supernatural will be visible to everyone. The veil that covers our eyes from the spiritual realm will be lifted and these invisible fallen angels will be revealed to everyone on earth, but they will cloak their identities. The Bible says Satan can appear as an angel of light or can materialize in whatever form he chooses. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles 
which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. The book of Revelation says Satan will deceive the kings of the earth and that God will start to withdraw his protection over humanity. In the next episode, we will continue the UFO investigation and expose the plans of these demonic entities. There's a common message found with people who have had encounters with aliens. They always warn people of an impending doom and appear to care about the condition of our planet. It's not a coincidence that we hear in the news daily warnings about climate change. We are being fed a narrative to get us ready for this coming deception. Unfortunately, people in very high levels of our military and national security are making poor decisions that will affect us all. There was much more information I could not fit in this video, but join me for the next episode as we will dive deeper into the UFO phenomenon and find out where all of this is leading. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube or Rumble channel and follow us on Facebook. Thank you for watching and God bless. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us?